We bring to you another episode in our Doorway to Send webinar series brought to you by Sindhi Culture Foundation and the Embassy Group, providing you a glimpse of Sindhi history and culture. Today we have with us Professor Vasan Shinde, who will share with us his decades of research on the Harappan civilization and our connection to them. I thank Professor Shinde for sharing his expertise with us today. I now invite Dr. Kush Deba to continue. I am Aruna Madnani, a proud Sindhi. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to today's lecture uh, organized by the Sindhi Culture Foundation on understanding the roots of the Sindhi diaspora and tracing them all the way back to the Harappan culture. Uh, today we have with us Professor Vasant Shinde, who is the director of the Department of Science and Technology's Rakhi Gadi project. He has also been the former vice chancellor of Deccan College Postgraduate and Research Institute deemed university and former founding director general of the National Maritime Heritage Complex. He has been working in the field of Indian culture and archaeology since the past four decades and he has excavated numerous sites all over the country ranging from proto-historic period to the medieval period. Mo uh, some of them, some of those sites are like Rakhi Ghadi itself all the way in Haryana. His most notable and significant contribution in this field has been his research on archaeogenetic research and 3D facial reconstructions of the Harappans. Uh, this has not done, been done in India ever before and he is a pioneer in such research. He has published extensively in the field of Indian culture and archaeology in the form of books, uh, edited volumes, journal articles and popular articles. Some of them uh, are ancient Indian knowledge systems, heritage sites of Gujarat and Chalcolithic South Asia. Hello, Professor Shinde. Good afternoon to uh, you, Kush, and to everyone. Good afternoon to you as well, sir. Uh, just to give a short introduction of myself, my name is Kush Debar. I'm a PhD in ancient Indian history, culture and archaeology from Deccan College. and Presently, I am working with Dr. Sh uh, Professor Shinde on the Rakhi Gadi project by Department of Science and Technology as a senior research fellow. So to begin with, sir, uh, it is very interesting to, to know about whatever you have done so far, but it, it's very, it's, it's just very uh, important for us to know that what got you into the field of archaeology and specifically Harappan archaeology, like what were the reasons? To begin with, you know, I landed in archaeology very accidentally. In fact, I completed my, my uh, you know, uh, graduation bachelor's from uh, one of the colleges in Pune in history. And after my uh, uh, bachelor degree, I went to one of my professors to find out, you know, what I can do next. And one of the professors said that, why don't you go to Deccan College and do archaeology? So there, for the first time, I heard the word archaeology. So that is how, you know, I landed because uh, Deccan College was very close to my place where I was living. So I found it very convenient to do archaeology at Deccan College. So this is how I landed uh, in archaeology. And then, of course, eventually I developed a lot of interest because basically I like traveling. I like field work. So I enjoyed this, you know, doing field work and traveling uh, because of this, you know, requirement in the subject. And then I developed so much interest. Now, at one stage, you know, it became, uh, you know, part of my life. And then, of course, I completed my master's in Deccan College and then also PhD on the proto historic the Chalkothi, the first farmers of uh, this uh, region of Maharashtra. And then, of course, now I got into the profession and I started excavating some of the Chalkothic sites uh, in, in Maharashtra, also in Madhya Pradesh also. And then I realized that you know, if you want to really understand the Chalkothic or the first farming of Maharashtra or Central India, I think you need to understand, you know, uh, who are the people who have influenced these early farmers here. And... Uh, of course, you know, everybody was talking about Harappans. I also realized that perhaps Harappans were the first 
people who must have influenced the farmers of Maharashtra. And that is how, you know, I, I thought that I should start working on this uh, Harappan culture to find out, you know, that, you know, how the Harappans have contributed to the development of the Jayapati culture in Maharashtra and even in, in Central, you know, India. And that is how I started my work in, in, uh, in uh, Gujarat. I participated in the excavations uh, at the site of Kuntasi, which is a Harappan port. And then after that, I carried out the excavations at the site of Padri. And then, of course, at Padri, I discovered the you know, early phase of the Harappan culture. And that has uh, you know, a very you know, you know, a huge bearing on the Harappan archaeology. Because before the discovery of Padri, it was thought that you know, the Harappans have moved from Sindh region to Gujarat for maybe trade and uh, commerce. But now you know, we also find the roots of the Harappan culture in Gujarat also. So it is now becoming clear that, you know, that the development was happening simultaneously. And then I also realized that you know, uh, perhaps the core region of the Harappan culture is the Saraswati region. Uh, today it is called Ghagar Akra Basin. So I started you know, working in this region because I thought that I might get some clue about the you know, early beginning of the Harappan culture and the growth of the Harappan culture into civilization. Now here I would like to also mention you know, that we are using two terms. One is culture and the civilization. For the Harappan culture, of course, you know, the time span is very long from 6000 BC to 1300 BC, that is the total you know, time span of the Harappan culture. And there is one phase of the Harappan culture, which is the most prosperous, in which we find the development of cities and towns, urbanization. And that is between 2600 BC to 1900 BC. So that phase is called the Harappan civilization. So we, are, we use the term both in fact culture and the civilization you know, in this context. Then I realized that, you know, that uh, this is the most important region. I started working here when I excavated sites like Farmana, Girawad. Then I found that, you know, that you know, the beginning of the Harappan culture is really going back and we are getting very early dates in this region. And then, of course, I landed at the site of Rakhigadi, the biggest Harappan city, much bigger than the site of Mohanjadaro, which is in Sindh region in Pakistan. And there, you know, we are getting the early dates for the beginning of the Harappan culture. And we have a very strong evidence to indicate the growth of the Harappan civilization here from the modest beginning around 6000 BC to, uh, you know, a fully developed urban phase around 2600 BC. So that transformation is very clear at this particular site. So this is how you know I, I you know I started my career in fact you know in Deccan College. I started liking archaeology. I started working on the proto historic maybe early Arapan, you know early Chalkoti cultures in Maharashtra, and then I wanted to find out the roots of these cultures, and that is how I landed you know in working on the Harappan culture, and uh, the Saraswati Basin of course is the most important basin for the Harappan culture because we find a heavy concentration of the Harappan sites in this part. Nearly two thirds of the known sites are located in the Saraswati Basin. So this is how you know my journey in fact into the Harappan research is. What was the significance of the discovery of the Harappan culture or civilization back in the 1920s? And what was its significance and what is the significance in South Asian studies today? Say when uh, uh, it was discovered in 1920, you know, most of the historians, you know, believe that, you know, there is a gap in the history of South Asia before the discovery of the Harappan culture, Harappan civilization. And then, you know, uh, scholars like Vincent Smith had written that India jumps from Stone Age to the Stupa period or the Buddhist period. And there's a big hiatus in between. So that was the understanding of most of the historians, even archaeologists in this part. The discovery uh, of the Harappan culture has completely changed the perspective. In fact, let me tell you that, you know, that the actual excavation started at Harappa and Mohanjadro simultaneously in 
2021 and they you know john marshall who was the head of the excavation at both the places now he took nearly 4 years to understand the date of the antiquities or the remains that he was excavating on 20th september 1924 the announcement of the discovery of the harappan civilization was made and the first paper that john marshall wrote was in the illustrated london news and it was called the harappan culture you know at one stroke the settled life in the in indian subcontinent or in south asia was taken back by almost 3000 years so that is very very important and now india boasts of a continuous history for almost 2 million years the earliest stone tools discovered in indian subcontinent are dated to around 20 lakhs 2 million and from 20 lakhs till till today we have a continuous history india is perhaps the only country in the world where we have such a tremendous continuity in the you know cultural history so this is very significant of the discovery of the harappan civilization let me also tell you the significance of the harappan culture why i consider harappan culture as the most significant important in the entire cultural milieu of south asia because it sets the foundation of modern south asia the south asia was was the most important region in the past even today it is the most important region and harappans were responsible for developing some of the important basic sciences and technologies and these sciences and technologies developed by the harappans they are they are so relevant that even you know a modern people find them quite relevant and there are a lot of community in south asia who are following this you know the harappan maybe you know knowledge system i call this as a knowledge you know harappan knowledge system so you know a lot of people are following this you know you know this uh, basic sciences and technology developed by the harappans then a lot of knowledge that was created by the harappans that is still relevant that can be put to use even today for example you know the water harvesting and water management system that the harappans developed it was so unique in the contemporary world and even today it is so unique in fact this knowledge system the water harvesting and water management system that the harappans developed that is that can be put to use even today in the desert part and i tell you that you know the desert can be converted into green land so it, it you know it is that significant and there are potters in south asia the stone bead makers in south asia metal workers in south asia for following the harappan tradition harappan technology even today so because of that you know the harappan knowledge is so important i always consider that you know that uh, they are the founders of the indian culture and tradition most of the traditions cultures cultural elements that the harappans uh, developed they are being followed even today we are living in a in a different way we are living in a harappan age maybe there is some minor maybe variation here and there Uh, you know because of that i feel that you know that the harappan culture is so important and uh, everybody should know about harappan culture if you want to know about your maybe origin and how we have really evolved then you need to go back to the roots and the roots are in the harappan culture so it is because of that the study of the harappan culture is so relevant so important so significant that everybody should understand that thank you sir uh, that was Uh, really enlightening and but sir uh, there were a lot of contemporaneous civilizations or cultures in the world yes. to the harappans for example the mesopotamians or the egyptians now how were the harappans different or similar to them in your uh, uh, research according to your research see we always compared the harappans with the mesopotamians and the egyptians because all the three cult you know civilizations were contemporaneous and they had very strong contact with each other basically for trade purpose so a lot of give and take was happening between these three civilizations maybe in the middle of the 3rd millennium bc now you know given a choice people will always say that i want to see egyptian side because there are pyramids to see even today or you know if the situation is ideal maybe they will say that they would like to visit some mesopotamian site because there are big temples ziggurats or there are life size images so that is the attraction for the people 
but we don't see that in the harappan levels at you know most of the harappan sites you know we do not have that and that does not mean that the harappans were not competent enough if they had decided they could have easily built pyramid like structures because harappans were considered to be the best civil engineers in the contemporary world so they could have done but the philosophy of the harappans is different now we are inviting the you know maybe people from all over the world to understand the harappan you know philosophy we are developing this you know the site museum at the site of rakhigadi and we want to showcase the philosophy or the practical aspect of the harappans so that means harappans were generating a lot of wealth and this wealth was used by the harappans not for creating those maybe big monumental architecture which is of no use to to the common people so they used this wealth for creating very beautiful well planned and hygienic cities for the common people also you know the harappans have not really buried they you know wealth in their you know maybe burials or in the tombs because they knew that you no know, once the wealth is buried it is gone forever and they cannot be cannot use that wealth for the developmental purpose symbolically they have maybe buried some wealth along with the dead bodies but not much so this wealth was again used by the people for developmental purpose so egyptians had you know maybe you know some kind of monarchical system you know kingdom system there the mesopotamians also had the same system and there everything revolved around this you know kingdom system only in mesopotamian egypt everything was created for the royal royal families there but the harappans had completely different system probably i believe that the harappans had some kind of a incipient democratic system like a panchayat raj today so that was a system created by the harappans and you know they could get you know some of the public architecture done by you know through, through these people now they did of course build some of the maybe big fortification walls maybe you know granaries even public baths etc but these public uh, you know architecture was were you know were meant for the public so they could be used for the by the public so that is the difference so i always believe that in the harappans were more practical people and you know they are the people who did not believe in creating something which is of no use to the common people so that is the difference between the egyptian and the mesopotamians and the harappans so we really need to showcase this aspect the whole world should know about how philosophically the harappans were thinking differently what was the you know be the, the practical aspect of the harappans that needs to be understood and that is really important for everyone everyone to understand that taking cue from your latest research that is archaeogenetic research and uh, 3d reconstruction of the facial cranio facial uh, uh, ana- analysis and 3d reconstruction of the harappans so so what ha- what hypotheses and what various answers have you been able to come up with the question like who were the harappans eventually harappans were the indigenous people and that is scientifically proved now almost now we are celebrating 100 years and this is the first research that we did on the ancient dna of the harappan people because if you want to really understand you know who are the harappan people or maybe you know their relation with the contemporary population or with the modern population also you need to get dna we simply cannot understand by simply looking at the people so we tried very hard at the site of farmana and then of course at the site of rakhigadi and finally you know we found dna from, you know in these people and the dna clearly indicates that you know the you know very distinct south asian ancestry was developed maybe around 12000 years ago and that ancestry continues into the harappans and from harappan till modern times you know the same ancestry continues so now it is becoming clear that you know this harappan culture and also civilization that was developed by the indigenous people there is no doubt about that so what happens then you know that most of us people in south asia now we are carrying the harappan ancestry even today we have analyze the you know dna of the modern people nearly 3500 people from different parts of south asia from afghanistan to bengal 
and from Andaman Nicobar to Kashmir. And we found that you know, in all these people, we also selected people of different caste, different religious you know, ideologies also. And we found that you know, most of the people in South Asia, they also continue, they have the Harappan ancestry in them. So from Andaman Nicobar to Kashmir, from Afghanistan to Bengal, most of the people have an Harappan ancestry. That means you know, we are the descendants of the Harappans. All the Sindhi people, the Gujaratis, even Marathi, you know, even you know, Telugu and Tamil, they all belong to the Harappan, you know, they they rather they are the descendants of the Harappans. So this is a very important, you know, uh, clue that we got from our scientific research. And this research is published in a very prestigious scientific journal called Shale. And uh, this has been recognized by the international body as one of the you know, breakthrough researches in 2019. So this is the latest uh, research that we have done. And the second research that we did, the craniofacial or the 3D reconstruction of the Harappan people, that is also significant. That is also, you know, very important because, you know, the complexion of the people has not changed for last 5,000 years because, you know, we did the reconstruction at the site of Rakhigadi. So the uh, Rakhigadi Harappans and the Haryana people, they look exactly the same. So there is a lot of continuity. Even in the archaeological data also, we can see the continuity from Harappans till modern times. So as I said earlier, that all of us rather are living in the Harappan legacy impact. And we are carrying forward this Harappan legacy. So this Harappan legacy is quite clear in their archaeological data, in the genetic data, and also in the craniofacial or the 3D reconstruction that we have done. So this is a very significant research and you know people of different religion different caste and creed you know they have the same ancestry this is very important that that has come out from our most recent work clearly uh, this research is path breaking and now sir the question that is eagerly awaited by all the listeners is how is the Harappan culture or civilization connected to the present Sindhi diaspora of India and neighboring countries? Say, I always call the Sindhis and Gujaratis as the true followers of the Harappans. Because Sindhis and Gujaratis, they are the you know typical business-minded people. And Harappans were the business-minded people. See, one lesson that the Harappans have left behind which even modern world follows they have they realize the importance of trade and trade was used for their own development own benefit and this is what is important even today most of the nations give importance to the trade and one lesson that you know that world has le learned from this from the harappans i give uh, i always give the example of the of japan Japan was destroyed almost in nine, you know, in Second World War. I have seen the destruction in fact at Hiroshima and Nagasaki when I visited Japan. And nobody realized that you know, Japan will rise again. But you know that Japan rose with dignity in 13, 14 years. Japan became a world economic power in 14 years, and they could showcase that in 1964. Tokyo Olympics. So what Har you know what Japanese did was same as the you know Harappans did. Harappans started importing a lot of raw materials from surrounding area or from the contemporary you know people. They did not have the luxury of having the raw materials in their in their area. So they imported this. The Harappans had technology with them, so they started producing finished goods, and they supplied finished goods to the same people from whom they obtained or acquired raw material. Exactly the same philosophy it was, it was followed by the Japanese. They had technology with them, but they did not have natural resources. So they started importing a lot of natural resources from developing countries like India, China, etc. And they started manufacturing goods, you know, very high quality goods, goods. And they started supplying this finished good to you know, the same countries from whom they were acquiring raw materials. And that is how Japan could acquire so much wealth and Japan could become a world economic power. 
So this is a lesson that you know the you know, the Harappans have you know left behind. The Sindhi diaspora, the Sindhi you know people are following the same. The, the Gujaratis are following the same you know philosophy even today. So that is one thing that you know I would like to mention. Then also you know that you know that uh, you know uh, the Harappans gave a lot of stress on trade with their contemporaries, either they are the you know maybe hinterland people or people beyond maybe Harappan region, you know, maybe in other countries. So they de develop contacts with uh, maybe Oman region, with, you know, in the Gulf region, with Persian Gulf, with Mesopotamia and Egypt also. And they had a very flourishing, very lucrative trade with these countries. And that is how, you know, Japan, you know, this uh, Harappan could, fl could flourish. You see, you know, the Sindhis and Gujaratis are found all over the world, and they are spread basically for the trade purpose. Now it is now quite clear that you know genetically the Sindhis, Gujaratis, you know they are the descendants of the Harappans. There is no doubt about that. Even you know one of my students work on the Harappan script. She was a Sindhi student, and uh, she has uh, almost demonstrated that you know the Sindhi language and the Harappan language or the script was very close. Not yet, you know, deciphered, but you know, the language and the you know script was close to the Sindhis. And you know, uh, Sindh, Sindh region has a lot of legacy also. For example, Mohanjadaro. Now, this site is known for ages. The local people used to worship that site, saying that you know this is this is our you know place of our ancestors. So therefore, you know, it's called the Mount of Death, you know, in Sindhi language. So there is so much connectivity between the, you know, the Harappans and the Sindhi people, Gujarati people, and, you know, the other people in fact came under the, you know, influence of the Harappans also. So this is a, you know, very long, you know, we can really give a lot of examples and show the similarity between Harappans and the present Sindhi diaspora or even Gujarati diaspora also. The final question, which everyone would also want to ask you is what actually happened to the Harappans? Like, where did the civilization and the culture go? And you have given a lot of examples in the previous answers, but uh, how does the legacy still survive? See, uh, uh, around 1900 BC, the climate started changing. It was becoming more dry and dry. And we have now climatic data from not only from this part of the world. We have done a lot of you know climatic reconstruction in this part of the world, but also we have data from China, from Mongolia, from Western Europe, from West Asia also. And everywhere, everywhere it is becoming clear that around 1900 BC the climate was becoming dry and dry, more arid, and that had you know tremendous implication on impact on the Harappan culture. So Harappan culture also started declining around the same time. Because of the uh, arid condition, they had to desert, you know, the two important agricultural bases in the form of Indus River Basin and the Saraswati River Basin. They had to gradually shift from there and they started moving towards the periphery part. Then, you know, the one of the most important rivers where we find, you know, heavy concentration of the Harappan sites, the Saraswati, that river also goes dry around the same time. We have archaeological evidence, you know, indicating, you know, this particular event. So this was happening then, you know, uh, because of the dry climatic condition, the sea level was going down. And according to geologists who have worked on the Saurashtra coast, they said that, you know, the sea level has gone down by two to three meters. And that also impacted the Harappan trade with other countries its external trade was impacted because most of the Harappans built number of ports on the Makran coast, on Saurashtra coast. And these ports were, you know, developed for facilitating trade with West Asia, with Mesopotamians and Egyptians. Because of the lowering of the sea, these ports went down and they became almost inland settlements. The lucrative trade was completely stopped, in fact, at this particular stage. So that had also bearing on the Harappan economy. So gradually, you know, what Harappans did, in fact, Harappans started moving towards the periphery part. And the periphery part was already occupied by the contemporary population. For example, in the Ganga Basin, we have a culture called OCP culture, which is contemporary the, the Harappans. 
so they got mixed up with the lucivi people in madhya pradesh you know the chakutik malwa region you know malwa culture was there in deccan malwa and jorve cultures were there so they got mixed up with all these cultures and there in you know, the harappans have kept alive the harappan tradition harappan technology there and that has continued from you know generation to generation you know till modern times and india has a very strong oral tradition in fact you know i can give you one small you know one example i was excavating at uh, balathal in you know in uh, near udaipur in mewad region of rajasthan and one fine morning one person came to our camp out of curiosity i asked him what is your profession he said that you no know, he recites the you know genealogy of the royal family he was illiterate but he said that he can remember the genealogy of the royal family for 800 years so we have such a strong tradition in indian subcontinent or in south asia so because of the oral tradition this knowledge was passed on from generation to generation and then of course india has the earliest universities like takshila for example nalanda vikramshila so these are the earliest universities where then this knowledge was transformed into a formal education system so people from all over the world in fact came here in india to learn the traditional knowledge system which was developed by the harappans so this how you know, the legacy has continued in until modern time in fact i can tell you that you know, when I, I, we are excavating at rakigadi sometimes we go around in the village uh, in the evening when we have some time when i move in the village i get the impression that i am moving in the harappan village because the roads are exactly same even dimensions of the road exactly same as the harappan dimension the you know modern house plan is exactly the replica of the harappan house plan the people are you know using uh, tandoor which is developed by the harappans they are still using lot of earthen pots the exactly you know the earthen pots look exactly same like the harappan earthen pots including you know maybe surface treatment the you know maybe you know shapes and size of the pots exactly si- you know same as the harappan pots if you keep one harappan pot and one modern pot side by side you will not be able to recognize one you know which one is ancient and which one modern so there is so much continuity even the agriculture system is same as the harappan agriculture same system the you know tools used by the you know, you know farmers are exactly you know replicas of the harappan tools so there is so much in fact continuity even today and this legacy has continued due to you know this particular process that happened in fact in the indian subcontinent and therefore you know we proudly say that you now we are the descendants of the harappans because the knowledge that was generated by the harappans is found to be so relevant that we even follow that even today there are stone bead makers in khambath who are following the same technology as the harappans did and they are doing roaring business they are exporting the replicas of the harappan stone beads all over the world so this is the you know the you know beauty of the you know cultural continuity in indian subcontinent and all of us feel proud about this thank you very much professor shinde for such an in- insightful and interesting talk i am sure our listeners have a lot of questions a lot of burning questions in their heads about why they are the way they are and i'm sure they want to understand their roots even deeper now so sir we thank you uh, on behalf of the sindhi culture foundation and uh, hope we have more such talks by you in the near future so i i would like to thank uh, aruna ji for inviting me here because uh, i always want that you know people common people should know about our uh, our roots and uh, this is a very important initiative that uh, aruna ji has taken and i really appreciate that uh, the knowledge that we are generating is being dispersed in fact all over the world in fact to the common people and couple there are a lot of misunderstanding about the subject about why should we study ancient cultures etc but you know there is so much relevance i always believe that you now if you don't know the roots you don't know anything about yourself so to understand the roots of you know, you know your yourself your culture you need to study this subject and the knowledge should be disseminated all over the world in fact so thank you arun ji for this and uh, i look forward to interact more with uh, you in this respect thank you very much
अज प उत्तर पार दे ताड़े की तवार अज प उत्तर पार दे ताड़े की तवार हार न हार न हर संभारा मुझा सरिया चा संगार अज प मुझे यार वसन गावे सकया अज प उत्तर पार दे ओ अज प उत्तर पार दे ककर तो कार करे अज प उत्तर पार दे ककर तो कार करे वसे तो वड पुड़ो कालक खंड भरे विजण न सान वरे मुज सकार न सुख दिए ओ तो के सिंधड़ी सारे वे ओ तो के सिंधड़ी सारे वे